Hello and welcome to this episode of For Your Consideration, which this month is very sadly dedicated to my friend Helen, who was on my animation course uh, and she died uh, just before we recorded this a week or so ago. Um, so I'm de- going to dedicate this episode to her. Um, and it seems fitting, uh, although it's very sad, uh, because this is an episode about animation, um, which I will be discussing with my fellow co-host, who is, is as ever... Hello. Michael, hello. Yes, it's me. Same bloke as always. Um, yeah. And we are discussing the, the uh, three... Uh, earliest Wallace and Gromit films this uh, month. Um, hello to everybody in September, uh, going back to school if you're in that world, uh, or sending your kids back to school if you're in that world. Yeah. Um, I think I think mine are on a, a an inset day on the day that this comes out. Um, but we're recording this just before our episode on Blake 7 drops, so we look forward to hearing your reaction to our chat about Blake 7. Um, which was August's uh, episode, will be August's episode. Um, and the literally the t- two days before this goes out, Michael and I will be in Hooverville. Yeah, um, yeah I'm where very we, much looking forward to that. We may have gone live briefly to do some chat. Um, so you may have seen us very recently uh, before you're listening to this in your ears. Yeah, but um, that's all in our future. That's in or our today. future, your past. Yeah. But yes, today we're talking plasticine. We are. And now, filmmaking. This was, this was your choice. So this was my choice, yes. As always, same question as always, why this choice? Uh, well, so, uh, let, let's just put some dates on this. So, uh, A Grand Day Out, 1989, um, was the culmination of Nick Park's master's final project, which he started in 1983. So it took six years to come to fruition, partly because he left the National Film Television School, got a job at Ardman, and obviously had to do stuff for Ardman, and then was able to finish this uh, as an Ardman project. Um, So that came out in 1989. I didn't see that then. I was five. That was on Channel 4, but I didn't see it at the time. Um, So the first I was probably aware of Wallace and Gromit was The Wrong Trousers, 1993, Christmas 1993, on the BBC. And then two years later, we got... um, a Close Shave, uh, which was uh, shown at Christmas 1995 and then repeated on my birthday in 1994. Oh, no, not 1994. 1996. Sorry. The second terrestrial broadcast of, of A Close Shave was my birthday in 1996. I remember that. So, yeah, so I saw Ron Crowns, um as did a big chunk of the nation, I think, um, uh, on uh, on BBC Christmas 1993. And, and it was amazing. Um, and... Uh, I was thinking about this earlier. That those two, those two months, November and December nineteen ninety three, have, have turned out to be very significant for my future because November nineteen ninety three was Dimensions in Time, so my first first watching of Doctor Who, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> followed in December by by watching Wallace and Gromit. And I, I mean, I guess I was already interested in animation because you know a lot of kids' TV is animated, um, and obviously Wallace and Gromit is not. Not necessarily specifically aimed at kids. Um, there's a lot of humour in there um, that is aimed at adults, um, and certainly a lot of the sort of filmmaking style of it is something that you don't really appreciate as a kid. You know, the sort of film noir of the wrong trousers, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it's very much a kind of family thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I I I. Wanted to be an animator, I think, probably as a result of this. Um, and and obviously, I got to be an animator for some portion of my life, um, mostly while I was a student studying mm. animation. Um, but I think I can trace a lot of it back to this. And I, I'm I'm gonna I'm obviously this is an audio only podcast, but I'm gonna hold this up to Michael. So this book is a great book. Is a great book, cracking animation. So so th- this this book really did change the course of my life. So I yeah. bought I bought Cracking Animation, which is a sort of history of animation and then sort of how Ardman animated stuff. Yeah. Um, and I had a book token from my nan for 10 quid. Uh, and that was and a would, lot of money back in the 90s. Which, 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 well, no, that would have been Christmas 2000... 
2000 possibly 2000 Hmm. No, yeah, two thousand. It would have been two thousand, um, and it was, and the book was twenty quid, but it was half price in a shop. So I had ten quid, and I was like, I'll buy that. Um, and and I was, so I was doing my A levels. I was headed down a route that was probably going somewhere sciencey because I was doing maths and physics and design technology. Um, but I picked that up Christmas of my uh, year twelve, and and it suddenly was like, oh yeah, no, this thing that I've been wanting to do sort of have dabbled in as an as a sort of amateur this is a thing that people do and i kind of i guess i knew that people did that but i'd never really contemplated the but it was never that us. i could do that we yeah. we were never those people no um but anyway so i read that book and i was like oh maybe i could do this and so i then um i then sort of took a sort of, sort of slight left turn really and i spent a lot of the rest of <clears throat> year 12 and then some of year 13 producing a short film um uh which was a day in the life it was it was sort of it was sort of inspired by sort of the truman show in that it was just, it was supposed to be like a day in the life of this guy who was always being filmed uh and he was in the bathtub and he had a robot butler and then this thing came out of the bath and ate his robot butler and you know peril you know um <clears throat> so that was it um and i took that to three different universities two of whom gave me offers and i went to sunderland to study animation um and that, yeah, i guess that can all be traced back to to watching wilson gromit and loving it and you know re-watching it ad nauseum you know anytime it was on we probably taped it um i got the dvd at some point i now have the blu-ray was very excited uh, in my final year at uni when the Wallace and Gromit movie came out, um, you know. So that's you know, it's just it's just a big part of my DNA, really. Um, yeah. What What about you? What was your encounter with Wallace and Gromit? Right. Okay. So um, uh, let me see. There's a few things that that need to be gone into, but they're all they're all different points. One of them is I did do work experience in Ardman in Bristol, which was incredible while I was on my degree. So I didn't do particularly well at my A levels, um, but I did do art and a few other things. Um, but then I ended up doing a BTEC um, OND in theatre production where I did makeup and things like that. Now, at the same time, I had friends who were doing much better than me in, in college. So I need to name check some people who I have not seen for a getting on 30 years. So there was Alan Towns and his then girlfriend, Laura. And we, without those two people, uh, my music tastes would be completely different. My outlook on the world would be quite different. And the, um, there, there would be so much different. But I'm, I'm at Laura's house, probably waiting for Alan to turn up. And she says, oh, we taped something off the TV last night. You've got to see this. There's a brilliant bit with mice and glasses. And I went, what do you mean? She, and she went, she went, oh, you'll just love this. Right. So we put it on. And I remember, because I'd, I'd missed it. Now, I've got a memory of it being taped from Channel 4 as part yeah, yeah. of one so, of their animation festival things. And I can't place this time-wise. I'm thinking it's it's sort of 90, 1990 or 91. So it's quite early on from when it was. But I, I can't do that anyway. So... So they do that, but they they also they're the people who went. Oh my God, you love animation! It was like, yeah, I do love animation, but that was incredible. And it, and it like you, it like blew my mind. It was going, how how is, does this exist in the same world as like your Saturday morning cartoons? And there was there was the three D animation that I had lo- adored and loved as well. Um, I'd grown up watching Morph. I'd grown up watching mm-hmm. a, a lot of other stuff. The Ray Harryhausen. Oh God, I loved Ray Harryhausen stuff. Right. And and all of that. So I was kind of steeped it in any way because of the big, you know, the big geek that I was. But this just spoke to me. It was like, oh, my God, it's so English and it's and it's northern. How does I mean, obviously, it's south to me, but it's it's northern and it's yeah. and it's animated. And oh, my God, could like you, could I do this? And it hadn't even occurred to me. It was like, yes, I know I can do this. I've, I've made stop frame animation stuff as experimental tiny films. And then also they um, they found um, at Sunderland uh, a course where they did three di- three dimensional communication and design, which was building props for film and TV and that kind of thing. 
So I did that, but halfway through that, well, it was only a two-year course because that was an HND. Um, I thought, oh, I'll catch up with everyone now that I've done a, a, um, a theatre course for two years where I did theatrical makeup and I was also helping out people who were on the uh, animation and filmmaking course at Northumbria University, uh, people like John Fletcher and a few others, and I was doing their theatrical makeup for, the, for their monster effects. So I was building props for them at the same time. And I thought, this is brilliant. This is what I want to do. And I applied to, to, to go to Northumbria after I'd finished the HND. And luckily, I got funding. So I could I had the HND. And then I had the full degree. They said, oh, you can just do the one-year top-up where you do the, the filmmaking. And I was like, yeah, but I'll miss out so much. Can I do the full year, three years? And they went, actually, you can. It's not a problem. That would not <laughs> happen now. I, yeah. I'll, I'll put my hands up and say that would not happen. But that's what <laughs> happened. They said, yeah, you can do that. So I did full three years and I was way, way behind all of the people I'd gone to school with. They'd left like, they'd left university like three, four years before me. So I was a, I was one of the older people on the course. And this was, uh, this was animation at Northumbria University. And it was just, it was just great. But we did the classic things, the squash and the stretch and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I used, uh, but we, in 1986, we go to Cardiff, okay, and there's a talk by Ardman, mm -hmm. and they're to they're the uh, I think it, it, it's it's the bloke who bloke who run Ardman. I don't think Nick Park was there, and he's saying that yeah we were just getting on with our lovely little documentary series that we do the audio recording, and I'm thinking write that down, do audio recording separately, and then we'd interview people, and then we'd lip sync, but they they were all a bit depressing to be honest. They were all people talking about how cold things were, or they couldn't afford things, yeah, and then yeah. we'd animate it over them, and their times in the war. And then there was flashback sequences. And then we met Nick Park at a festival. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just gonna hold up, I'm just gonna hold up the DVD that has all of those films on it. Uh, yeah, exactly, right? And and I'm just enraptured by this thing. Now I know it's 1996 because me and Chris Ellis go back to the hotel room and watch the Paul McGann movie. Because that, oh. <laughs> that dates it perfectly. So I'm watching Paul McGann's movie in Cardiff, which is a weird Doctor yeah, yeah, crossover yeah. thing. Anyway, so uh, so that's that inspires me and they, then they say but then we met nick and he was making people laugh at comedy for at animation festivals and we thought we want a piece of that yeah and then we thought oh i wonder what we he we can teach him and then he turned up and he thought oh, i wonder what he can teach us yeah because he understood movement and things like that so so nick park's a, a brilliant inspiration as well to me mm -hmm. and that's why i went away and i went right okay let's make a shopping list and i went away and, and i contacted you know uh, for my second year film, uh, like John Pertwee, and uh, he wrote back and went, yeah, come round to my house for free and do this. The way that Nick Park had done, had written to Salas and gone, mm -hmm. can you do this? And he'd got, he got 50 quid for, for this film. And, and I got mine for, for free. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I got a better deal. But anyway, so I had this, I had, well, I know that predated because he was already dead by that point. So I'd recorded that the year earlier, but obviously I'd done lots of research and things like that because mm -hmm. you do. And yeah. then I learned animation. So that was the second year film. Was that in my third year film? I, I was interviewing um, Stephen Fry and Ed Edmondson and Josie Lawrence and, 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 and what was it seven or eight quite, you know, in really big names for the time comedian wise. And then like the Anna Ardman, I did that. But, but my work experience in the second year was to visit Ardman. And uh, I'm, they they took me into one room and sorry I'll just blow my own trumpet at this point. So they're doing it. They're showing you round, and mm -hmm. uh, and it's a nice little talk. And they go and this is the room where they make stuff. And oh my god, sorry I've missed out McKinnon and Saunders where they do the puppetry. And I love making three D <laughs> stuff so much. But anyway, yeah. so I go into the room and they're all building stuff. And then the guy says, "Don't go in there." And he points. He says, "You you you can't go in there. In fact, don't even look at the door. Do not go in there. That's the chicken room." But I shouldn't even have said the chicken room. Oh, it's too secret, right? So and, they were and in one the day, early stages of chicken run at that point. Yeah, very early. And I did have to act as a bit of a gopher at that point. So I got to meet Nick Park for about 10 seconds when I took him a letter from reception that was very important. And I met him and I was just like, hello, are you? I didn't even need to go, are you Nick Park? It was just like, uh, Mr. Park, yes, I've been sent to give you this. And that was it. That was my entire meeting. That with was your entire interaction with That Nick was Park. even wow. shorter than my meeting with Jerry Anderson. It was it was ridiculous, right? <laughs> so, so I um, that I was still, my only meeting with him in the chicken say, room as well. That sounds about this. That sounds about the same length as my meeting with Matt Smith, which I, was you were very good yeah. in that shake hand 
off he went. Um, Bye. Yeah, it was like. Yeah. But I, inside, I was just like, you know, Kevin and Perry go large. I was like, oh, hello, Mister Mister Park. Hello. I was like, that was ridiculous. So while I was there, they put me in a studio and they said, right. Um, and they gave me two and a half pieces of per- of orange plasticine and a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of black. And they said, make, and they said, a, morph. make a morph. Here's here's a resin morph. You need to extrude them because you don't just push them together and make yeah, separate yeah. arms and legs. You have yeah. to push all the plastic together and then pull them all out. Otherwise, the mo- the the there's, um, there's actually it doesn't a, work. there's a thing there's a thing in here that says that that's yeah. what they do. Oh, that everybody right, who comes uh, has yeah. to make a morph. Well, that's and what they, they do. You, and they show you how to do it in the book. So you know, yeah. And then got, they, they, they put the me in a studio test. with with a umatic recorder and they said, right, make him walk. And I had him walking, and then they said, right, now make him trip up halfway through and things like that. So we were doing that. And that was wow. great. That was an absolutely superb time of my life. It was brilliant. And I was by myself. So so that was that was brilliant. So Ardman's been such a great part of my life. So yeah. without Laura going, there's a brilliant thing with mice with glasses on. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have done Sunderland. And then I ended up going back to Sunderland in the 2000s to do my MA. But I wouldn't have gone to university to do that. I wouldn't have. Yeah, done. So yeah. it's a, that, that somebody putting the glasses on is, is just incredibly important and when i was watching it back i was going this this took six years to make that level yeah. of passion i mean all right it's, it's taken me that long to write some of my books but yeah, yeah, that yeah. level of passion to try and get other people involved and get it all going and it's great but then there's so many hints and tips that both of us have picked up over the years yeah. and gone right we'll get the voices from this and then we'll put them with that and yeah. we'll make sure we've got the signed releases and all this business and we've I really mean, done things by the book but the audio was recorded in 1984 when even i was 12. i was only just born um exactly I but this this is the thing like like you say by the book i mean literally i was the the page of wallace mouths in yeah. the in the book was like mind-blowing you yeah. know, you're just like, oh, so you hack the mouth off, you put another one on, you smooth it back into place. Mm. That makes so much sense of how you yeah. do it. And then I created my own, uh, I think my character was called Roger, and I had my own right. box of Roger mouths. Yeah. Um, that I would, the the that Stephen I would Fry bit in my degree in. film, he's got, uh, he's, he's a stick figure, but he's got about 30 different faces, yeah. like facial expressions and mouth shapes that yeah. just match that so that I could swap them out and put them in. Because it's the Jack Skellington interchangeable face things. Yes. Where that's why I mean, you could buy at the time thousands of heads on in the, for 500 quid because they made oh, there's so many all heads. The, all the heads. I mean, mm. I, I do I do feel it's a shame. You know, when you see the more recent Ardman films and, yeah. and you see the behind the scenes and they've just put the mouths on and then they clearly CGI the gaps out. You know? Yeah. Whereas obviously at the, before you were just like no you smooth the plasticine in then you have to hack the mouth off and try again, uh, but it was just it was just sort of formative really like this is the and I I did a I did a sh- I did a film when I was the the geek camp that I used to go on which yeah. we'll come back to in a future podcast because I've got some okay. from that that I want to do but um I made an orange rocket nice. that was it was it was much more angular but you know it was basically hmm. me ripping off the the rocket from a grand day out and. There's just there's just so much of that, like you say, that's part of our that is part of our DNA. And I, I think if you said to the average person on the street, can you name a British animator? Yeah. They would either be able to they, they would either not be able to, or they would say Nick Park. And I remember when I was thinking about going to anim- going to do animation at university, people would ask me, Oh, are you gonna be the next Nick Park? Like that was their mm. touchstone. Yeah. And I arrogantly said, I'm gonna be the Luke Harrison. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we we all did that. We um, all re- you know, re- yeah. um, and obviously, I have not made my name in animation, but you know, and, and talking about meeting people, I mean, I my, well, that's, my... That's, that's the upsetting bit. Sorry, for me, I've got, um, I've still got the audio from meeting John Pertwee because he recorded two for me. I did one that's on YouTube somewhere. I think it's had about six views. Yeah, yeah. And and the other one, I've still got, and I've never got round to recording we, it. We we should make that happen. Well, the thing is. What kit would I have? Because we, like, let's face it, let's put our hands fit up. We got into animation at the time when it was a really bad idea to be in animation because everyone went, hey, I've bought some computers, lads. We'll do it over here. And we were like learning to weave in the same year that the Jacquard looms were wheeled out. And they went, we do this now. Well, 
Well, I suppose my, and, my and degree... neither of us bothered learning the computers. I know I did. Oh no, I, I did. Was very... no, no, I See, did. I was. Oh, I wish I. Had. I did. I did. I so I did. My so my degree. My degree was basically the first semester was, like you say, principles. So squash and stretch was the first week. Anticipation yeah, yeah. was the second week. You know, um, and it was you'd, we'd go in on Monday, and the lecturer would be like, "This is the principle this week. This is what we're doing. Go mm. away and." Next Monday, when I come in, you all need to be showing me a ten-second-ish animation on the screen. And we we basically yeah. we had a computer system, so we had a we had a, a rostrum camera, rostrum camera, to the computer setup, system, yeah. and there was a little there's a little keypad where you could press for one or two. Can frames. I just see? We, we were still using Umatic. I'm sure you, our I'm camera sure you had were. a rollback with root. Yeah, yeah. No, ours was a mini DV cam, but we didn't shoot to tape. We shoot we shot directly onto the computer with a little keypad. And oh, we, nice. We sh- we shot we shot twos yeah. for everything. So ju- just to, for people who don't know the terminology, if you're shooting <laughs> ones, I'm, I'm just nodding. We're going, oh, of course, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you're if, right. If you're shooting ones, you're shooting one picture for every thing that you do. And so if you're shooting on video, you're shooting 25 pictures per second. If you're shooting film, you're shooting 24 pictures per second. If you're shooting twos, you take two pictures, and so you're then only doing 12 frames a second or 12 and a half frames a second. Uh, which means you only have to do twi- you only have to do half the number of pictures or half the number of movements, and and a lot of Wallace and Gromit is shot on twos, with the exception of something like the train chase. That's all ones, as far as I'm aware. Uh, oh, well, the, book the, says the train that, anyway. chase. It says ones, but they also used an extended um, uh, shutter release exposure. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for to get the blow background. So yeah. they're shoot they're shooting on film. Yeah, oh yeah, they're shooting ex- on film. Yeah, so yeah. it's an extended. Um, Aperture, exp- sorry, right. If we've lost yeah. anyone, I'm. You know what? I'm not. No, sorry. it's fine. We're just geeking I, out over the technical. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I literally don't care yeah. that I'm yeah. that I've, I might have lost someone because yeah. this is something that, um, you, you kind of repress it in your everyday life. Yeah. Um, that your your love for your 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 disappointment that you're not doing it for a living, you yeah. have to knock on the head once you're past forty, yeah. but once you're past fifty just grinds in your head like <laughs> like oh my god you sat there oh, sorry please don't let anyone from work hear me but you're sat there cleansing data and you're going i know this is important and i know this is potentially life-saving work but part of me just wants to be messing with plasticine right now yeah, yeah. well like so i mean I'm, I'm fortunate enough that i get to work in the video production sphere yeah you know i'm employed to make uh video three days a week for a charity and then I work for myself the rest of the time making video um and during the pandemic which was my first year in the job that I currently have um I got to make an animation we were basically we were going to be sending out uh, these boxes called imagination boxes uh for the supporters of the charity um and it was, was going to be like a quarterly thing and I yeah. basically animated the first one so it came it, it I had it plopping through the door and then I picked it up and then I opened it and then stuff came out of the box and then uh, there was some rice somewhere that animated the logo of the of the charity, you know. So I I do get to dabble, um, and there's a lot of crossover in terms of the way that you animate stuff in Premiere within video editing, some basic stuff. I mean, I I get to move graphics around and stuff. Yeah, I mean, so there's, but there's I don't stuff I don't I, yeah. I don't do the plasticine stuff anymore. And I you know, as much as I love I it, see, it's no, really I see plasticine, hard work. But what I, what I actually liked was the skeleton stuff. Was was the um, was the expanded form latex skill basically oh. the stuff that McKinnon and Saunders were making? Yeah. Like, like I know Mars Attacks was CGI, but that's only because it was going to cost them too much money and too much time to do that um, two three D animated puppet. But we're talking. But they made the, they made the original we're talking puppets all of for those. Mars Attacks, right? Well, they did. I've held one uh, because because they did the camera tests with them. Yeah, and and they were trying. Uh, they were trying while I was working at Cosgrove Hall because McKinnon and Saunders was in a little office next door. They were trying to work out how to mass produce molds from masters that weren't degrading, degrading. Sorry, uh, by duplication. So you right. ideally you would have created say ten resin copies and then produced ten resin copies from those ten resin copies. So everything was only second generation. Right. But every time you made something from a resin uh, from a silicon mold, you'd take a tiny bit of the silicon mold with it. So you are still right. degrading, although you're making a first generation copy, obviously right. the first one's going to be the most best. So they were trying to work out how to make you know a thousand marshes. They had to make a lot of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and they were just like 
because everyone was just so desperate not to do it with CGI. Yeah. To stick with it. But then you ended up with like your Frank and Weenie and your and all that other stuff. So so Manchester and Bristol are the are, are the yeah. bedrocks of our world. And 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 now I believe there's an Aldi where Cosgrove Hall was. Because that, that was the only place that did two D and three D animation. Because upstairs they did the drawn stuff. It was, a, it was yeah. such a nice sleek room. But downstairs, oh god, that was so good. You had the big studio and then you had the slightly small and then you had the big workshop. And and I felt so at home. Oh, and again, I, my mate John got us in there, and and I've got um, I've, I've I've only got a couple of things that I kept from the time there. I was only there for a few, well, for sort of less than a year, but that was that was so good. That oh, was where see, I met Jerry I'm, Anderson. I'm jealous of all this stuff because I I got to visit Blue Zoo, yeah, uh, yeah, who make Alpha Blocks and all that kind of stuff, mm. uh, and I got to visit Espresso where they make the uh, Frosties commercials. Yeah. Um, that was sort of my work. We basically it was part of the courses. You had to you had to arrange. It was sort of like can you adult basically. Um, uh, yeah. You had to arrange a trip to London and see all these different places, and you had to do it all by yourself. And it was great. I mean, it was great fun. Um, and then we had we did have a like, we had a visiting speaker from Ardman whose name was Lisa McCarran, and I remember this because she mm. sounded exactly like Janet Street Porter. Um, <laughs> and we had a whole lecture from her. Sorry, I, I, you, I, you just took a sip. That was the wrong. I did take but a sip like, of tea. I, and, yeah. I'm Le- I'm Lisa McCarran, and I work for Arban Animations. Um, and she'd brought with her a, a proper grommet. So I, a, this grommet got passed oh, around. I was like, I'm nice. holding an actual screen used grommet. Yeah. And then one of Snap Crackle or Pop. I don't know which, because um, obviously they used to make the the yeah. um, Rice Krispies commercials. Um, and I was let. She then looked at our work behind the scenes and chose which of us from the course would get to make this animation that was going to be part of this symposium that was happening um which was great fun uh, and that was cgi so yeah so as I, as I was saying my course went from all stuff on paper you know i had a stack of paper yeah. like m- massively high by the end of my first year because i then did my uh, well day one practice. is make a flick book and then well, exactly yeah then then zoetrope so you go yeah. you go through the history of it all as yeah. well well and, i mean, I, t- I checked out Weybridge's book from the library so many times mm. Um, because he was the pioneer in the late nineteenth century who did all the walk cycles. So, so here's here's my last bit of yes. crappy trivia. Okay, so years later, um, uh, I'm I'm living in Yorkshire. Um, I've got Verity. I'd been a stay-at-home dad for ages. I'm trying to get back into some form of employment, and I get a job. Uh, there's a list of places I've wanted to work in the world, and Cosgrove yeah. Hall and Ardman were on the list, and so was the Bradford Media Museum. The only <sighs> place left for me to work. Is the BBC off that list? That's it. Right. That my whole list's been done apart from that because I'll never get to work for like Universal or anywhere like that. Although to be fair, once the park opens in this country, I'd be bloody good at teaching them how to be good staff. But anyway, <laughs> I, no, trust me, I I know their films right. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, after the fire, uh, where Ardman's a lot of Ardman's props were destroyed, yeah, there's not yeah. a lot of grommets left, and there's not a lot of original yeah. stuff. But yeah. on, I think, the second floor of the Media Museum, at the back, there's the there's a surviving set. It's quite an old animation display, but there's a surviving set of that, of Wallace and Gromit, from the close shave, and there's some original props. And every day when I'd go into work, because I just used to be a gallery host, and then I used to help out at the BFI um, movie cinema history thing uh, section, uh, booking people in and recommending yeah. old TV. I mean, me recommending old TV. If that's not a dream <laughs> job, what is? Right. So, uh, but then I was a gallery host and I, every day I would go in 10 minutes early and I'd go and see Wallace and Gromit just to pay homage to the little Plasticine guys who survived. So that that's Aww. it, basically. That's so, I mean, they've always been there. Yeah. So I went, I went to Bradford. I must have gone as a kid. Mm. And then... I went there every year as a student because it was then where the Bradford Animation Festival yeah. was. Um, and it was where I then heard that Scream of the Shalker was going to be shown. I so did I came not know back. this. Well, so the first three episodes of Scream of the Shalker were shown mm. at the, at Bradford, not on the IMAX, on the, you know, on the regular cinema screen. Oh. The first three episodes were shown there between the webcasts of episode two and three. So episodes one and two had already been webcast online, but sometime yeah. in the week between two and three, they brought they they webcast they they had the the, the three episodes up to that point. Paul Cornell was there to do a Q and A, 
and I actually met him in the foyer because I recognised him from Doctor Who magazine. So I was nice. kind of I was skulking around, and I saw him come in, and I was like, "Oh, hi, Paul. Hello." You know, um, and so we had a nice a nice little chat. He didn't know me from Adam, um, and then uh, Paul's yeah, always a, nice had, to everyone. That's fine. They had a, they had a screening. They also had a screening of the Horns of Naimon. Okay, interesting choice. They picked cool. Well, so this was the thing. So I I knew Horns of Naimon's reputation. I had I believe I had won. Because you know the BBC website used to do those competitions to win yeah, Doctor yeah. Who stuff before Doctor Who came back, so it was it was just for a time. I had won the VHS of the Horns of Nymon, you know, because I happened to enter all the competitions and that was the one that I won. And I knew its reputation. I'd seen it. And I was like, mm, you know. And then I watched it with a tiny group of normal people in the cinema in Bradford, and it everybody laughed. Are you, you know, sure it, they were normal? Well, I mean. I, it, no, it I'm just thinking. That, yeah. It struck me that I was the only kind of hardcore fan at this event. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At an you event know. that's got Paul. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no. No. So the point. The, 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 the Horns of Nine was a separate screening, kind of earlier in the day. Oh, anyway. got you. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was right. like, and then they had the so people. The sc- so people screening. were laughing. Were you offended, so people, or did you just think? I'll no, and I just thought, oh, this works. You know, and and, mm. and obviously I've seen, I've since seen people say that if you treat Horns of Nine as a panto, you yeah. know. But obviously, because it was, it was, it was broadcast over the sort of Christmas New Year period. Um, it works, and I love. I mean, and, and Tony Cross of this pod, occasionally of this podcast, loves Horns of Naimon, um, oh, yeah, as well. Um, and uh, and it was great. It was just lovely to see. And uh, you know, it's weird to kind of go, which bit, which Doctor Who stories have you seen on the big screen? Well, that was one of them. <laughs> nice. And then they showed, then they showed um, Schalke, and obviously, I saw episode three, but ahead of the rest of the country. Um, mm. And and Paul Connell did a Q and A, and it was great. Um, and obviously, at that point, we didn't know, or maybe we did know. I forget. At some point during that time, they then announced that Doctor Who was coming back properly. Yes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so it's all it all links up, doesn't it, Michael? Um, it does. It does. It does. So, yeah. But we've just basically waxed lyrical about animation for. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I don't think an anyone listening to this is going to mind. I don't. Well, I hope not. But we should talk about the the films in question. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and I'm just going so to say, the reason I haven't included Curse the Were-Rabbit is that that's a whole film, so that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Um, and I haven't included A Matter of Loath and Death because I don't like it. Simple as, I'll be honest really. with you, until you sent me the films, I didn't even know it existed. You didn't know it existed? <laughs> okay. No, no, I knew Curse of the Were-Rabbit existed, yeah. and I knew Vengeance Most Foul next year was in production. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Have you, did I you did watch not... A Matter of Loath and Death? Did no, I was about. Okay. I was literally about to yeah, before yeah, yeah. tonight. Okay, um, so, but I'd watched the other because I wanted to hear what the new Wallace was like. Well, so that's still Peter Salis, right? Okay, so, Peter, so, so, okay. so, 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 as far as I'm aware, there's been some other shorts over the years. There was Cracking Contraptions, which was in the 2000s. That's all but invoiced by Peter Salis. There's a guy who's officially replaced Peter Salis <clears throat> at. A, I think he did some stuff for the Proms. Ben Whitehead. Ben Whitehead. Yeah. So he's the new Wallace. Um, and I think he has done some commercials, maybe like where Wallace and Gromit are in some. Ah, right. I think that yeah, he's yeah. definitely done something. But Murder Most, Vengeance Most Foul, which is coming up this Christmas, which is the sequel to The Wrong Trousers, that's the first kind of proper thing with him. So it will be interesting to see because obviously Peter Salis's voice is very unique, recognizable. You know, he he is he is him. Um, Everyone can do a comedy take on it. But actually, sounding spot on like yeah. him—that's going to be yeah. a challenge. Exactly. Anyway, so so <clears throat> I like Curse of the Were Rabbit, but that's a whole other podcast. It would it would have been asking you to watch the equivalent of two movies worth. Yeah. And I didn't. I don't really like Matter of Life and Death. I have no. tried, but I don't really like it. Well, um, and it um, kind of comes like I comes kind of must later. admit, at various times in my life, there's been times when I'd put all three of them on a videotape and I'd just sit down and watch all three of them. Yeah depending on who I was with. So I'd watched yeah. those so many times that yeah, I just yeah. felt very yeah. comfortable just going, that's yeah. not a problem. So, but this was the first time you'd seen them on Blu-ray, right? Yeah. And Incredible. they look so... They look, if you haven't seen them in HD, yeah. because they they were shot on film, the, the, and the transfers are lovely, the three the 5.1 mixes are lovely. So if you can get a hold of the Blu-ray and you've got the yeah. sound system, go for it. Um, well, I must anyway. admit, I'm very grateful for it because I was... I was watching it, but I was seeing stuff. And that's one of those things. I know I know animation takes so long, so everyone yeah. gets to put their heart and soul into it and extra gags. And there's yes. always extra gags. But 
you've seen these for 30 odd years and you're still seeing new gags. I'm still seeing slightly... All right. In the first one, there's a bit where you can actually go, okay, so there's a thumbprint on Wallace's nose in this scene. Oh, I mean, there's so many thumbprints that you can see. Yeah, especially in the first... You can't. In the first yeah, yeah, yeah. film, especially because Wallace's head is a bit different, but then he evolves, and it's not. I mean, that's the other I, thing is you yeah. can you can kind of tell which bits were made first in yeah. in a grand day out. You can kind of go, mm-hmm. oh, that bit was made while he was at film school, because what as you say, Wallace sort of changes even through the film. And Gromit looks different in the first yeah. one, yeah, um, which is fine. I mean, it kind of it kind of works. There was um, a guy at university who didn't like the Wallace and Gromit stuff, and he and he came to me and he went, you know that you know Wallace and Gromit, you know Gromit. And I went, yeah. yeah. He went, right. The dog brain in Inspector Gadget, same dog. And it was like, okay, is that your entire argument? <laughs> that there's a dog that looks a bit similar in a different similar. animated thing? Who's yeah. clever? I mean, okay, then. Uh, you'll, you'll know this, I'm assuming, that Gromit was I'll originally, a, Gromit was originally a going to be a, a cat and he was going to yeah. have Peter Hawkins' voice. <laughs> I didn't um, know about the voice. And and the, I know in um, Europe he's been dubbed with a voice in well, various. Well, IMDb IMDb lists Peter Hawkins as the voice of Gromit, so they've somebody's okay. clearly got that inf- bit of information and gone. I'm going to put it here, and you're like, well, no, he didn't actually. Whether Nick Park ever got round to recording, I don't know. the The story that I've read, I think it's in the book, is that, and and again, this is one of the ones where you know that he did this at film school. Is the scene where Wallace is sawing the door in half. And he mm. saws through the trestle table, and yeah. he goes, and he has to get Gromit to come and replace him. Nick Park says that was the moment where he realised, because because at that point Gromit's heads down, and so you can't see him talk. You, he would, he'd have to kind of get his, yeah. anyway. And he realised that this, there was so much expression because obviously Gromit communicates so much without speaking. You know, there's yeah. so much going on with that face. There's so much skill in the animation, but he said it was that moment he was like, well, he doesn't need a voice. Um, right, but yes. So, but Peter Hawkins, he of Dalek, Daleks, and Bill and Ben fame, would have been the voice of Gromit. Nice. You know. um, but yeah, so let's briefly talk plot. So the first one is basically <clears throat> Wallace and Gromit bank holiday, build the rocket, go to the moon to eat cheese, yes. and come across a come across a vending machine. That's another reason that everyone thought I'd love this cheese. Che- <laughs> I am renowned and, in this entire universe for being the man who will eat all the cheeses. I've created an animated series called Cheese World and pitched it to Cosgrove and you, Hall. You know that Wallace and Gromit inadvertently saved Wensleydale. No, but I can imagine people going, so, oh, so I'll try the that. Wednesdale, yeah. The Wensleydale Creamery apparently was was go, going out of business. and then Well, it's, because it's Wallace, not a great cheese. It doesn't melt bec- well. I mean, I've never eaten it. so Oh, well, um, I'll get you some. Um but because Wallace mentions Wensleydale, suddenly everybody wanted Wensleydale, and and literally the business was saved mm. by Wallace that liking Wensleydale. Brilliant. Not even oh. Wensleydale. Um, and then yeah, the second the second two are a bit more sophisticated. But you've got yeah, you've got penguin. A bit. My well, God, yeah. they're incredible. Okay. Yeah. Incre- I mean, yes. I mean, just the level of animation, as you say. I mean, it's yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's a different level, isn't it? Like the kind mm. of animation we saw as a kid was stuff that was churned out at a rapid pace because you know they needed however many episodes of a, of a show yeah. you know and the, the there's when you compare them you're just like there's just a lot less movement going on you know oh absolutely i mean right okay you've got your basic and then Scooby Scooby you're like stuff. no this is just there's always well, movement there's always stuff going on the camera's doing interesting stuff yeah. you know yeah i mean um, we could do a whole episode about saturday morning cartoons which no longer exist but yeah. my favorite by far is ulysses 31 which I would I've gladly, never heard of that. <laughs> oh my god! I would. Gl- it's where Space Goat came from at some point. It's a whole different thing. But basically, it's a retelling <laughs> of all the Greek myths set in the thirty fifth, thirty first century. It's incredible. One full season, beginning, middle, end, done. Right? It's brilliant. <laughs> but then we also had stuff like Dog Tanyon and the Three Musker Hounds, which was yes. I, look, if it was in two, you were looking for one and all for one. Please, oh my God, no. Willy Fog? Did you have Willy Fog? Yes, eighty days around the world. Yep, the lot. Right, got all them. Yeah. But but like you said, churned out. But then we had well, see, we had, and let's not go into the whole where it came from and all the original cartoons and the stuff that was cut. But Battle Star. Battle of the Planets. I would run home from school okay. to watch that. Now, you'll have missed that, but that's no, fine. No, I didn't see cause, that. Because there's a whole Seven Zark Seven storyline. 
and I'm not even going to bring that to for your consideration <laughs> at any point, right? But that's a whole other storyline. But that's the animation we had. 3D animation for me was your um, was was the Cosgrove Halls, but the big one was the Toad of Toad Hall, Wind in the Willows animated TV series, which was that had. Um, oh, was it? it had uh, Del Boy. It had yeah. uh, David Jason uh, yeah. as Toad. David Jason. The voice. The voice casting. Was Peter, so Salis. Good. Peter Salis. Peter Salis. Peter Salis again. Uh, Michael yeah. Horden. Um, oh my God! I mean, Michael Horden just... as Badger. Oh. Yeah. And uh, then Truckers. Truckers. Yes, which they never made Diggers and Wings. Oh my God! I love Truckers. I read oh. the beginning of Truckers for an English exam. It was brilliant. I can do um, it now. I get. But you've, it? Got, you've got. You've Arnold got. Well, you've got Arnold Brothers established nineteen oh five. Arnold Brothers S nineteen oh five. Uh, yeah. for heaven's preservers um you've got nigel plaskett uh who who was a stalwart of of cosgrove or you've got joe yeah. mcgann joe mcgann uh, yes ah but um, we're forgetting we're forgetting the big one danger mouse oh right? yeah of course because, yeah yeah danger yeah. mouse and, and the reboot is not bad the, the reboot is so is I've a heard. total perfect yeah. it's a it's a perfect extension but it's as good as you the remember mix. the original being yeah uh wombles yeah paddington Yes. I, so here's my claim to fame. In my final year at uni, I was taught by Sheila Graber, who did the cutout animation for oh. Paddington. Oh, very and she impressed. was based in the Northeast. She would draw the cutouts in the Northeast. Was she? she? Would post, oh, she would man. post them. She would post them down to Ivorwood, who would then integrate them with the animated. Um, yeah. And the only reason they bear. were 2D is because they ran. They spent so much money on the bear, they couldn't yeah. afford to make everyone else 3D. Yeah. Um, oh. Yes, right. she was okay, great. So, I, I loved so, her. Anyway, so trying yeah, to get us back to track, track, track. We're going to be finishing quite soon, and I want to well, make yeah, this no, no. as good so as possible. So you've got okay. you've got the film noir. You've got the penguin, who's a chicken. Oh, no, he's yeah. a, he looks like a chicken, and everybody. I mean, the comedy of like you. It's this. It's the Clark Kent thing. He puts the glasses yeah, on. Yeah. You don't recognize his Superman. Puts the glove on his head. Everybody doesn't recognize he's a penguin. Right. Um, I've been reading the 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 biography of um, Canine Stole My Wrong Trousers that one bob baker yes i've been reading bob baker's one and and i, I skipped through to the bits about ardman right and, and basically um him and nick parker were left alone in a room i think right. and he, he suspected that there was a, a, a mirrored class going on <laughs> um when they would when they was uh so that he could just see if they got on and they did get on very well because they had a love of other stuff but again yeah. he was making um other stuff at the same time and and it was going oh i didn't finish my story earlier i'm sorry right so i'm being shown round hardman <laughs> right they take me to the kitchen where all of the all of the awards are right. and they go that's the oscar you can hold it if you want so no. i pick them so i pick them both up both oscars at this point and i hold one in each hand and the guy looks at me and he goes no one picks them both up <laughs> and i went okay then and I put them back because I so had so ideas above the, my this, station. So this was the Oscar for Creature Comforts and yeah. the wrong trousers. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that the reason that the Grand Day Out doesn't get doesn't have an Oscar is because Nick Park beat himself to the Oscar by winning it for Creature Comforts, which came out in the same. Just the the level of creativity of that man, the fact that he had two Sorry, Oscar. I just needed films. to tell my two Oscar yeah. story when the guy oh, looks the at me and you've was held like, an Oscar. "You've held that you've two held at the two same Oscars. time." Oh wow! But he was like, nobody um, holds both. Nobody, nobody holds, holds both. both of them. It was wow. like either your ego is off the scale, or <laughs> you're just a knob. And I'm thinking it's probably the second one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, so right. Okay, let's, let's so talk visual second... puns though. Okay, so yes, my yes, favorite yes. visual, my favorite visual puns. You know, duck matches. Yes. D- absolutely oh. hilarious. For those in for those not in the UK, there's a well-known brand Swan of matches Vestas. called Swan called Swan Matches, and they yeah. basically do duck matches. Um, you've got electronics for dogs mm-hmm. uh, that the penguin pulls off the shelf, and also then you've got Crime and Punishment by Fido Dogstoyevsky that Gromit reads oh. in. I mean, just yeah. all those, you know, all dog those bites man, that all the been put you know, in, yeah. All the stuff. If you if you just kind of pause on all the newspapers that you ever see yeah. in Wilson Gromit, there's stuff going on. There is. Um, right. Okay. So it's just. And then the Thunderbirds. Oh, obviously, we're a podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The exactly. Thunderbirds thing in the in the close shave is just delightful. You know? oh, yeah. Oh okay, yeah. I mean, it it starts with the first film when the his garden falls back and the cabbages are there and they fall yes, down I mean, the hole. Just like Thunderbird. You know, fa- uh, it's Thunderbird three, One. Yeah, three? yeah. One. Well, Thunderbird. Yeah. Thunderbird One comes out. Thunderbird of the pool. One. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yes, the the everyone loves the you know the, it's the chicken thing, but. Always my favourite character, and he's got even less facial expression. Is the cooker thing, the the droid, oh, the, the cooker, robot. 
the cooker yeah, robot in the is first delightful. Film. It's incredibly detailed, so well made, it makes no sense and it's brilliant. It's just all right, okay. Now, now this and all is what he wants to do is go time. skiing. It's just... Yeah. But this is what I mentioned last time. This is the crossover. This droid appears in, and I've written this down, Star Wars, right? No. The droid, yep. The droid from Grandy Out is in Star Wars, an episode called Visitors, Series 2. I think it's Tales of the Jedi, which was made by Ardman. Series 2, Episode 4, called I Am Your Mother. The droid is in the background of one of the shops. Oh, this is this new Disney Plus series that's been on in the last yeah. few years where there's a whole animated animated the, thing. It's all in different styles of animation. If you are even remotely interested in this animation and you're, you're not going to hold Star Wars up to be some sort of religion, then yeah. this is for you. Oh, right? I need to watch it. I need to watch that. There's some extremely yeah, yeah. weird Japanese stuff going on, which is just superb. There's If you like French animation, it's for you. It, it's... It's preaches. It spoke straight to my soul. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, this, yeah. that droid is in Star Wars. Oh, so although right, we've got the whole yeah, right, and I'll I'll yeah. send you the details of exactly where to find it because there's a screen grab. If you just Google it, it's there. Yeah, <laughs> and you can and you're like, whoa, right? <laughs> but you know, you know that that he was originally going to do a whole Moss Eisley Cantina on the moon. Yeah, and they he got to Arden and they were like, cut that bit. You, you you're yeah, never going to finish too it expensive. if you just have yeah. that. Just and he, and it's so much. It's such such a better film for just being that minimal thing. And that's what I, this was. What I was as I was watching it, watching all three of them. It's weird because the world, particularly for us Northerners, is so yeah. familiar. You know, I grew up for the first nine years of my life in a terrace, a northern terrace. You know, all the streets around my way looked like that. Yeah, you know, well, not so, quite, but yeah. So, uh, so that I mean, the model Towards making is just anyway, yeah. uh, it's just amazing. You know, the model making is yeah. just amazing. But you're kind of like, I know this world, I live in this world, and yet there are no people in it. Mm. You know, the only three characters you see yeah. in the wrong trousers are Wallace Gromit and Feathers McGraw. The only characters you see in a close shave are Wallace Gromit, Wendelin, Sean, all the other sheep, and uh, Preston. Yeah. You know, and Sh- Sean's become a massive the- thing as well. Well, he's become he's become his own thing. Yeah. But the the rest of the world is hinted at just through the visuals and the sound mm. design. You know. Like Feathers McGraw is still on the run from the police, you know. All this, yeah. and it's all hinted at with sirens and lights and everything, you know. But the mm-hmm. world that we're part of is just these characters, which I guess makes sense because you know, you, d- if you design, don't have to animate, design, it, animating don't do the it. design, you know, just yeah. 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 Oh right, um, okay. So there's a bit where Gromit's welding, and I'm always jealous of this moment, <laughs> right? Because right, what it is is there's a guy filming in real time a plasticine model and a sparkler. But because there's animation either side of it, you go, oh, yeah, he's welding. But what you're actually watching is a, is a locked off shot of someone with a sparkler. No. You're, well, you're, yeah, because the sparks are there. It, it's, you watch it back and you go, oh, yeah, that day they broke early for lunch because they'd shot 10 seconds. Or something. But you're unless the camera me. moves, you're it's got me. to be. It's got to be. It's the only way you would film something that practically. They might have but shot sure, loads sure of they different. Could just overlay it afterwards with a, with an optical process. Well, they could, but why bother? I, All right, well, you, I, yeah. you, you you might melt the plaster. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at. Right. I'm gonna have to look at it again. Um, but but it's so yeah. That I love those cheats and things like that. So yeah, yes. you know what? This is this is so English. This is so northern. This is well, it's Bristol as well. But it's it's so beautifully perfect, and it's such a massive part of our lives as well. It is. I'm it's really glad. Right. So glad you brought it up and, re- and recommended it because watching the the one the one with the penguin as it became known yeah, 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 yeah. in the house where I was um, was just oh you would watch it on a loop over and over again and it was so good and I just, so I love good. I love the fact that like the comedy the comedy wins yeah right so they go to the moon you know okay that's ridiculous you know. Because I was saying, you were saying last week, you know, I've chosen something that's sort of science fiction, but you know, it's fantasy, right? Because yeah, well, they can the breathe first... on the moon, yeah, and pr- it's made of cheese, and it's made of cheese, you know, yeah. Um, but the primary, the primary driver of everything is, is, is this funny, right? So, yeah. for the for the chase at the end of the wrong trousers, the geography of the house just goes. You just have to kind of go with it and go. They're in this yeah. kind of comedy space. That's the yeah. house, you know. Um, and just the kind of like the picking up the 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 
bits of train track and they happen to be yeah. the right shape to weave through the table legs and yeah. round the corner and just it's just it's as good it's as good as the the uh, the speeder chase in Jedi it's it's, it's that just it's so that level of brilliance yeah funny oh, and I've met the guy who did the the steady cam for the the speed of chase in the return of the Jedi, but that's another story. Um, nice. Sorry, that is another story that I will be wanting to hear. Another, that's another story. Um, but just and just the whole yeah. like. But we've the just thing been, is, right? We've just been okay. locked in a cupboard, threatened by but a that's... penguin with a gun, and Wallace is yeah. like, "You'll break my wardrobe." You know, it's just it's so brilliant. funny. It's brilliant, it's but, but the stealing so of the the stealing of the the, the breaking at the museums all. Good. But right, okay, that's Ardman money. They've got the they've got the money and the success that they've they've made a great first film, but yeah. it, I, I always come back to there's ca- there's tracking shots in the first film, there yeah. are camera moves yeah, at yeah. no point when we were doing our when we were at university did anyone go, do you want to move the camera? It's an animation. You're like what moving the camera? Are you well, mental? No. So right. So my final A level DT project was yeah. a. And it failed. I didn't. I didn't complete it. In electronics, was a stepper motor tripod head. Oh, there you go then. Because 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 I because I I did. I wanted to be able to move a camera. Because I mean I think I don't know. I think I mean I, I clearly come across the idea of motion control. You know, and I just I love the idea of motion control. The fact that you can kind of do all these separate passes and you probably on the computer do the same thing over and over again, and then you composite them all together. Um, but just the idea that you could animate the camera, you know, I had that, I had that idea. And obviously, when I did CGI, you could, you could very easily animate the camera. But I yeah. just, I love that. And and I did a few years ago. I used to watch this YouTube channel called Film Riot, mm. um, and they used to set a what they called the Monday Challenge, and it was do a thing, and post it on YouTube and label it with our thing, and we'll pick a prize. And one week they were like, do a chase, and I was like. I'm going to do a car chase and I'll send this to you because I think you'd love to see it. And it was a 30 second Lego car chase with camera, camera moves. Nice. And the way I did the camera moves, literally I had the camera on a table and I had a sheet with lines on that I'd already marked out what the camera was going to be. And I moved the, I moved the camera on a piece of paper and I slid it along in in line with all these marks so it would so kind the of step accelerate motor up was just the piece of paper yeah this was just it was just me doing it manually you know yeah and, I, and I, it's got this lovely tracking shot of these two cars chasing each other um oh that's that so nice. yeah and, and like you say i mean it, it must it must come back to this you know it must come back to the fact that i saw wallace and gromit at the, at the age of nine um mm. for the first time and and it was and it did, and there's so much stuff in it that i probably had i just had no idea how it was done and i can watch it now and i go oh, i can i can see how you did that yeah. Um, so, okay, and one of the most icon. I'm getting very excited and waving my hands now. Yeah, one of the most iconic sounds, the trousers, right? Yeah, just but the, that the piston, sound design. Yeah, yeah, just the piston and the clanging on the roof, and it just you know, mm. and the music. I just, I mean, oh. just, I just, how, you know. how is the? Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Now, obviously, we're we're pushed for time this week, so I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to stop because I want to talk forever about these things and I'm, you yeah. know what we might come back to them at some point we might, we might. okay so spot the two actor the, well it's quite easy this time there's one and he was no, in there's two there's, there's two, two. Oh, well uh, what, what anyway <laughs> hang on hang on Wendelin. Oh, anyway right do, okay do, yeah. do peter salis first go on ice warriors yes and he would have been in enlightenment if there hadn't been strikes in season 20 right that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yes, and then Wendelin and Reed, who of course was, was she the old lady who I always keep thinking is that the old lady? Anne Reed was the vampire lady. She was the vamp. Well, so ironically, she yeah. was Nurse Crane in Curse of Fenric, where she got yes. eaten by vampires, and then yes. in New Who she was in Smith in and Jones Who, as a vampire. Yes, yes, and, and she is as a lovely wool also wrestling Also in lady. The Dinner Ladies, which is one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. And she gets a pair of shears stabbed in her in Hot Fuzz. Ah, Hot Fuzz. I've not seen that for a very long time. <laughs> so and as I said, if Peter Hawkins had been the voice of Gromit, you'd still have a full house of Doctor Who But actors. then we'd be here all evening listing Dalek stories. Yes, <laughs> we would. We would. Um, now. Mm-hmm. And then, as we mentioned, Bob Baker co-wrote the two 
best ones. Who also um, created, yeah. K9 and Omega, and you know. Yeah. Co wrote some great Doctor Who stories. Okay, so this is the bit where I tell you what we're doing next time. What are we doing next, Michael? Right, now, okay, I want to go through this list until I find one you've not seen. Okay. Okay. Have you seen Spirited Away? Yes. Have you seen Norsica, Valley of the Wind? No. Have you seen Howl's Moving Castle? No. I think the only Miyazaki that I've seen is Spirited Away. Right, okay. Norsica's just too dark. Okay, we're doing Howl's Moving Castle. Okay. Right. Now, but I want you to have that list because I spoke to I spoke to my daughter because we're we're huge fans, and that's where it comes from is that love right. of that. Because uh, you you brought up my nomination. I, my original plan was to do some crappy nineteen seventies TV, right? But right. you brought up animation, and I went, "Oh my god, I love animation. Why am I not doing more animation?" And I went, "Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do something new, but I want to do something that you've not seen so that I can bring something new to you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And we'd seen Norsica. For the, it's the first one they ever make, and it's not strictly speaking Studio Ghibli. It's the one that they get the cash to make Studio Ghibli. Norsic is quite dark. Um, it's it's good film. It's a superb film, but I thought a little bit more mainstream. So I got I got together with Verity and we made a list of what we should do. So the first one was Spirited Away. If you'd not seen that, we'd just go straight in with Spirited Away. I have it's seen a, Spirited Away. It's a cracking movie. We could do that. But I thought, no, we'll do that. And then I thought, Norsic is great, but no. Third on the film, Howl's Moving Castle, admittedly based on a book, which we can do another time, which I'm now going to read. In fact, to be fair, I'm about a tenth of the way through it. I'll read that so I can bring it. But yeah, Howl's Moving Castle. If you don't own it, I'll post it to you. It's on Netflix. You can get that. It's really not a problem. I it's do, only don't yeah. currently have access to Netflix, so yes. You, send, I shall get you. I've got it on way. DVD. I'll send it your way. No problem. So that will be October's uh, episode. Before any of you hear this, Michael and I will see each other in person at Hooverville. Um, and so, uh, but yes, I will. I will say au revoir at this point until I see him. Then, and he will yes. say as ever, be seeing you. <laughs>